now recognizes the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Green, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank the witness for testifying. And since the indication is that we are talking about people who are not red, black, or white, but they are green, I assume we're talking about me. I happen to be green, Al Green. <laughs> if the gentleman will yield. I, of I, course I, I will. I, I'll I, yield to my. I, I, wish I, uh, I, I wish it was more people like you that were green, uh, not just in name, but uh, that could afford all of this. Well, thank you very much. And uh, I, I have been blessed. I, I tell people all the time that I am better than I deserve to be. But let's talk about reality for just a moment. And I'd like to have you give some testimony today since you are here. Uh, so let's talk about why FHA finds itself in the position that it's in. Uh, FHA is not a for-profit business. Is this a fair statement? That's correct. And FHA was established more than 80 years ago. Would you state what the purpose of FHA was 80 years ago and what it is currently, please? And if those two are the same, uh, please make note of it. So, as, you, as you may know, uh, FHA was established uh, immediately after the Great Depression, uh, uh, partly to get the economy back on its feet again, to get people working again, to get homes built, and uh, to get people uh, being able to live in those homes at uh, reasonably affordable uh, prices. And, and that was not just for one uh, classification of borrower. Uh, there, there's nothing about it that was you know, only for a low income, for example. As a matter of fact, um, when it was established, uh, there was no contemplation that it would help any specific class. Uh, but probably when it was initially established, the beneficiaries were rarely, well, not to a great extent, African Americans or Latinos. Is that a fair statement in the, in the infancy, the nascency of FHA? Uh, not having statistics, I would say that's probably a fair statement. So. FHA was not established to help African Americans or Latinos, but as time has um, evolved, FHA has been a benefit. And it did, after the Great Depression, a good thing. Was it of benefit to this country to have FHA after the Great Recession? Uh Yes, absolutely. As, as, as uh, you have heard quoted before, uh, economist Mark Zandi has said that if uh, FHA had not been in the market uh, you know, during that uh, worse recession, uh, the, you know, we would have had a, a worse economic uh, crisis uh, by property values dropping 25% uh, you know, more than they did and, and you know, therefore making the uh, economic recession even worse. Well, I, like my colleagues, am of the opinion that FHA has served a meaningful purpose. It has done what it was uh, designed to do. And I think that we need to continue this effort with FHA. So I'd like to ask you a question now about um, in-person servicing. Uh, FHA seeks to help persons who are having some difficulty with their mortgages. Uh, in-person servicing is an option. And the information that I read on this, the intelligence seems to indicate, to connote that you get greater results if you can perfect in-person servicing as opposed to doing it by way of email or some other form of servicing. Uh, we have a piece of legislation that would um, uh, allow firms, businesses to work with FHA to perform in-person servicing uh, to modify loans, to get engaged in short sales, to refinance. And my question to you is, uh, is that something that we can uh, talk to you about, this in-person ser in servicing, so that maybe we can save even greater numbers of persons from having to go into foreclosure? 
So I, I would be uh, happy to have more conversation with you ab about that. Uh, I do believe that high, high touch, so to speak, um, helping existing homeowners in any way that we can, if we can get them to reperform, if we can get them to stay in their home, uh, that ultimately is going to help uh, the fund as well as the homeowner. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Time of the gentleman has expired.